Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's education videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use PhotoP, PhotoP.com, to imitate or mimic a cyanotype. Here's what the finished product is going to look like. Let's walk you through the whole thing. First, open up the photo that you want to use as your cyanotype image. You might want to do some edits to this before you import it into your new document. If your photo looks like this, if you photographed something natural on a white background like this, you're probably going to want to make it a little bit brighter. Just the way that the cameras work when it sees a white background like this, often the photo is a little bit on the dark side. So we're going to go here into Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. It's really easy. We're just going to bring up that brightness just a little bit. We just want that white to be a little bit brighter. Now my f particular image is somewhere in here in like the 45 range seems to be looking okay. Um, your photo, you're just going to look at it until it looks right. I'm going to click OK and now that's done. The next thing I want to do is desaturate the image. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and I can do this a couple of ways. I could choose the Hue Saturation Adjustment or the Black and White Adjustment. I'm going to choose the Black and White Adjustment. I click there and then I'm just going to click OK. Now you could, depending on your experience uh, in PhotoP, you could have changed some of those color sliders there. We're not gonna, we're just gonna click OK. The last thing we're gonna do here before we bring it into the new project is go ahead and invert the image. We're gonna go Image, Adjustments, and then Invert under the Adjustments panel, and that will make the photo a negative. It'll flip the image all the way around. Now we're ready for our new project. Right. So this is the finished pro project, product, finished product of what we're trying to do. And in traditional cyanotypes, the coating or the emulsion, it's called, the emulsion will actually be painted on with a brush. And so we're going to try to mimic that process of looking like a paintbrush or looking like the emulsion has been painted on. So after you've done your edits to the photo here, what we're going to do is go File, New, and we're going to create a new document. Now in PhotoP over here, I've already got the numbers that I want plugged in. What I would do first is change your DPI to 300. Do that number first. So change this number here to 300. Now this number says 300.000. That's fine. It's still 300. Make sure that the unit is pixels by making sure that this says PX here. If it's not, you can change it to PX. And then finally, plug in 4,000 by 3,000. That's going to work well for most of us and most of our photos. 4,000 by 3,000. You could do it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, depending on the image that you're using. Um, and then we're going to rename this here Cyanotype. And then maybe your last name. Something like that, I think, is going to be helpful to keeping track of the file. Make sure that the background contents is white. And then we're going to go ahead and click Create. And this is going to create our new background. The next thing we want to do is paint in the area that we want to appear to be the emulsion of the image with the brush tool. Now, if you click the letter B on the keyboard, that will select the brush tool. Okay, It's right here, though. If you're looking for it on the left-hand side, that's where the tools are. And if you click and hold it and then press here on Brush Tool, there you go. Now, I've already selected this, but if you are looking for a brush tool that looks more like a brush than anything else, you're going to choose one of these over here, 87, 99, 100. One of these last three down here should get the job done. Now, I think I had chosen maybe 99. This is big marker. These are all big markers. Let's go with wet marker. We'll try that. We'll see how it goes. Now, this right here, okay looks pretty good, but it's really small. Trying to get the image to look like this with such a small brush is going to be really challenging. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. The shortcut key to undo something in PhotoP is Command-Z on a Mac or Control-Z on a Chromebook or some other kind of device. What I want to do is change the size of the brush. And I can do that on the keyboard by selecting the right bracket key, which is just above the return or enter two keys to the right of the P on most keyboards. And you can see what happens here is it gets a little bit bigger. And if you wanted to make it a little smaller, you could use the left bracket key. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and just paint it in 
I'm doing this really quick and sloppy. If you wanted to make this a little bit neater, you could. But again, this mimics the painting of the emulsion onto the photo paper, making your own photo paper. All right, that's good. Next, we're going to bring our leaf photo into that cyanotype file. We're gonna select the move tool. That's the tool right up here. And once we select the move tool, we click on the photo and drag it to the cyanotype. We don't let go until it's centered right here in the middle of the image. Now mine happens to fit, but if you need to adjust the size of the photo here, now notice over here in the layers palette, you can see it says background and background again. Before I go any further, I'm gonna double click that and I'm going to rename that the leaf layer so that we can keep that distinct from the background layer. So there's the background and there's a leaf. Now we're not done, not by a long shot. If I need to adjust the size of the leaf, what I would do is go up here to the transform controls, right? If I have the move tool selected, I can click on the transform tools right there. And if I hold the shift key down on the keyboard while I'm making this adjustment, it will lock the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio is the relative size between the height and the width. Watch what happens if I don't hold the shift key. I can stretch this down really small like that. That doesn't really look how I want it to look. So I'm gonna hit escape on the keyboard to reset that. And if I do hold the shift key down while I'm making this adjustment, what I can do here is I can make it bigger or smaller. I mean, maybe I'll make it a little bigger, okay? I can make it a little bit bigger, but it keeps that aspect ratio so it doesn't stretch out a little bit. Once I do that, I can kind of center it here in the middle and I'm ready to go ahead and move on to the next step. I wanna get the move tool again and I wanna uncheck the show transform controls so now I can work with the leaf layer without having to do that. Okay, the next step is to go up here to the layers palette. Now I select the leaf layer, make sure I'm clicked on that. You can see that you can select different layers here, make sure that the leaf layer is selected. And then go up here to normal and change that to lighten. Now the lighten layer will allow the leaf to actually get put onto that nice painted background that we have. This is a black and white photo though, so we wanna make it blue or cyan color for the cyanotype. So what we're gonna do is go down here to the bottom of the layers palette where this little half circle is and we're gonna click new adjustment layer and we are going to change the color balance of the photo. Now, when we're adjusting the color balance, you have to go up here to range and select shadows. You're gonna drag your blue all the way up to 100 and you're going to drag the red to the left because the opposite of red is cyan to 60 or thereabouts, right? Somewhere around 60, 65, 58, that's fine, 61. Then you're gonna go to your midtones, select your midtones, and do the same thing. You're gonna increase the blue and decrease the red. And somewhere around 25 blue and 35 red, minus 35 red, plus 25 blue, and we are in good shape. Here's the last Step, we go to this little half circle again, and we're gonna go ahead and click on hue saturation, and we are going to desaturate this a little bit. So we're gonna bring that saturation down to, let's try a minus 30-ish or so. That seems to be looking what a lot of cyanotypes look like. That is now a finished product, a finished cyanotype. It looks a little bit different than the one I started with here. That's fine. You know, you're gonna do this sort of two different ways. You can see the blue here is a little bit brighter. Um, you can certainly have different edits and every time you do this, it's gonna be unique. And that's kind of the cool thing about a cyanotype. If you were to do a cyanotype in the darkroom, you would get different results every time as well. So when you're doing this in Photopea, it's, it's the same process. Here's our completed product. And I had done one right before I started this video and you can see it looks a little bit different. Um, the goal is to get something in this kind of range where you have these different blue tones uh, represented here. And uh, that's pretty much it. The final step is to save your work. We're gonna go up over here to File, Save as PSD. This is an important process. If you ever wanna edit this down the road, you can't edit this if you don't save it as a PSD file. So save it as a PSD file, save it to your computer. Here you can see, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop really quickly. I'm gonna save it as Cyanotype Stance Field. Click save real quick. And then 
the next thing you want to do after you save it as a Photoshop file or save it as a PSD, that's what that is. PSD is a Photoshop file. After I do that, I want to export as a JPEG and I want to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and just click save. I'm not going to worry about anything else that I see over here. I'm just going to click save and then it's going to save to my desktop. Maybe I'll add two and then save so that I know my JPEG is saved and my PSD file is saved. So you always want to save it twice for this project. You always want to save it as a PSD first and then save it as a JPEG. And that is how you make a cyanotype in Photopea using photopea.com. Hope you enjoyed that.